Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for this opportunity to present my research. My name is Jennifer Parker, and I'm a first year PhD student in stem cell biology and regenerative medicine program here at Stanford, as well as a member of Dr. Longacre's lab. And I study implant biology and fibrosis with applications that range from drug delivery, tissue replacement and reconstruction, biosensors, scaffolds for tissue engineering and prostheses, implantable devices and materials have become a ubiquitous component of modern medicine. Though they offer significant benefits clinically, use of these materials often results in an inflammatory reaction known as foreign body response, or FBR. This reaction is characterized by a series of stages as highlighted in figure one. One, provisional ECM formation due to the original implant surgery, followed by an acute inflammatory phase as the immune system reacts and senses the foreign body. This is preceded by chronic inflammation as the immune system continues to attempt to phagocytose the foreign body. And finally, fibrous encapsulation, the last stage of FBR, where fibroblasts attracted to the implant site surround the implant, deposit collagen, and effectively wall off the implant from the rest of the body. Now, for additional background, the Longacre group established that there are at least two populations of fibroblasts in the dermis, engrailed one lineage negative fibroblasts and engrailed one lineage positive fibroblasts. These are ENFs and EPFs for short. As highlighted in figure two, EPFs predominate in wounds. <clears throat> Using a engrailed one AI6 mouse where engrailed one positive cells glow green, they were able to demonstrate that wounded tissue had a diffuse presence of EPFs within the scar tissue seen by the green cells in the <clears throat> lower panel B, whereas these EPFs were not present in unwounded tissue, which is the above panel in B. Importantly, when they took a deeper dive looking into the mechanism of this phenomenon, they determined that EPFs are derived from a subpopulation of ENFs via engrailed one activation as a result of mechanotransduction signaling. By blocking YES-associated protein, YAP, the final transcriptional effector in mechanotransduction, the lab reduced, found that healed wounds had significantly reduced scars compared to untreated mice. Further analysis at an omics level of this established that of this mechanotransduction inhibition showed that the inhibition reverted the fibroblast present in scar tissue towards a regenerative, unwounded state. And so with that background in mind, our goal is to determine the role of EPFs in FBR mirroring model of subcutaneous implant placement and fibrotic capsule formation. We hypothesize that similar to the mechanism seen in scar development during wound healing, fibrotic encapsulation post-silicon implantation is mediated by the engrailed one fibroblast lineage and the mechanotransduction pathway. To start, we established our mirroring FBR model. Eight millimeter diameter, 50 durometer implant grade sterile silicon discs were placed subcutaneously in the dorsi of engrailed one Cree MTMG mice. These mice have engrailed one positive cells light up green via GFP, whereas all other cells are red. And this model schematic, as well as a uh, representative photo of peri-implant tissue four weeks post initial surgery are seen in figure four, illustrated here. Figure five illustrates hematoxylin and eosin staining, as well as Mason's trichrome staining of representative fibrotic capsules four weeks post implant in the engrailed MTMG mouse. Figure six also confirms that EPFs are indeed present in the fibrotic capsule. Here you can see the fibrotic capsule which is uh, on the left of each panel. This one represents the fibrotic capsule next to the subcutaneous layer, and this side, the, uh, the fibrotic capsule next to the muscle layer. Now, from these initial data, we made an interesting observation where in the subcutaneous layer, the fibrotic capsule appeared much thicker, you can see here, relative to the capsule that was next to the muscle layer. And following this observation, we speculated that perhaps the actual tissue environment could be influencing the fibrotic response seen at the site of the implant. And this inspired our next experiment that we illustrate in figure seven. So implants here were placed subcutaneously in the dorsi of these same engrailed MTMG mice for four weeks. Fibrotic capsules were then harvested, carefully separating the capsule adjacent to the subcutaneous layer to that in the muscle layer. Tissue from these two experimental groups, subcutaneous and muscle, were then sorted via fax to retrieve green and grilled positive fibroblasts and red and grilled negative fibroblast cells. These were then submitted for single cell RNA-seq. And we look forward to analyzing the single cell data in the upcoming weeks once we receive the data back from the core.
To summarize, given the continued and growing use of biomaterials in medicine, FBR remains a significant complication that can lead to pain, discomfort, and device failure. Our preliminary results confirm the presence of engrailed positive fibroblasts within the fibrotic capsule, and we look forward to receiving sequencing results in the near future, which will provide us with insights on potential mechanisms of this fibrotic response. Thank you very much for listening, and feel free to connect with me if you have any other questions.